I thank Steve for uh, his presentation. Uh, I feel like I have a new ally in what I call the Ossipuck Wars. <laughs> uh, he believes a little differently than uh, I think Steve and I do about uh, uh, you know, crosses and attacks. But anyway, I'm going to get started here. I'll probably have to kick at this a little bit, although I can try not to do without this. Uh, I want to start off by saying that uh, yeah. we are yeah. with a very near our Just Nemo Pass in this uh, area. And uh, when I first hmm? met with Steve, or Paul, and about uh, putting together a program here, uh, I thought, well, are we going to say anything about our people? I mean, this is our Nemo's route through here. And uh, so uh, we didn't have much going there. And I didn't know about uh, Steve's presentation. I don't that was some of them. But uh, I said, well, I'll do something on our we got to do something. So I've been interested in, uh, I've been living in Southern Utah for 30 plus years now. And I've been a member of OSA for close to half that. I don't even know how long. Um, and of course, the Armijo Trail going through here uh, is what interests me the most uh, as far as the old trail. Um, so, one of the controversies is the Rolling the Coxville. I want to point out a couple of things. Now, Armijo left Abiquiu November 7th, 1829, and got to the Crossing of the Fathers on December 7th, so a month later. Um, you got to remember the days are short during that time. We were getting pretty close to the uh, summer or the winter solstice and uh, mules at that time uh, or radios would use to uh, go no longer, no longer generally in five or six hours travel time 12 15 miles a day would be good depending on the terrain it could be shorter it could be a little longer so we have to consider all these things and uh, I'm going to start from the Crossing of the Fathers and proceed. Um, you've all seen this. This is a uh, route of the various uh, coast trails, uh, the lower green one being the Armijo Trail. All right, uh, I can see this. This right here is Gunsight View, Padre Bay, right in here. Uh, the Armijo, or the Escalante Dominguez inscription, I believe, is right over in this area. That'd be right, Paul. Mm -hmm. That's for the Pasa Por Aqui signature, on 1776, which was uh, discovered by Jim Page and his group at one time when they were doing a graffiti removal in that little slot canyon there. Uh, so you've seen a picture of the uh, actual crossing of the Colorado River. Uh, not too far from that area. So they were there on December 7th, December 8th and 9th. This is why they didn't cross more of a westerly or even a southwesterly uh, direction. I was able to take these aerial photographs uh, by going up in a Kane County search and rescue airplane uh, about a month ago and just happened to, uh, I asked, the pilot says, where do you want to go? I said, I want to go over uh, Coxcomb and uh, Lake Powell. And so this is coming back from that Lake Powell area. Um, obviously you can see the, the lake up here. This general area here is where they would have actually traversed this area possible. Um, this is generally the landscape that they would have gone through, probably more on that right on that right side. Um, right here. Yeah. In this area, rather you know, impossible to go over this way. So um, from the crossing of the fathers to Wawi Creek would have been about 13, 14 miles. That's pretty good for them in a day. 
Um, this area here is where they would have come in. This is called Castle Rock here. I don't see them coming over this way. Lone Rock is over this way. That's often, often referred to as the site where they came into. But I think there was more coming into this area, which is generally over by Green Haven in that area there. Uh, wish those that are going on that trip west tomorrow will see some of this area. Uh, so they're coming around here. They're coming into the Wawick Creek, Lanco Creek, the White Creek. They had water there. Um, that's Lone Rock. And of course, with our drought, the lake has dropped considerably. That was when this used to be surrounded by water all the way up into here easily. And uh, this was, you know, a month or so ago. And that's the water level there. Um, well, we is up over this way, I think. And anyway, so they would have come in here, going up Huawei Creek, about 14 miles. This is looking back east. This is Blanco, Huawei Creek. They would have been coming up this creek, going west. That's, again, Lone Rock, looking the other way. That's the one that Navajo is up that way. Probably Tower View that way. This is looking east up Wawi Creek, and you can see why they call it White Creek or Blanco Creek. It's all this white demo sandstone, maybe page sandstone in there. Cap rock layer up on the higher level. Uh, so generally this creek has water in it. Sometimes it's a little dry, sometimes it's flowing pretty good. Uh, normally some water. Now, from their intersection with Wawi Creek, uh, about 12, 13 miles to the west, after they get a little past Big Water, it says uh, Sage, Colorado. The, uh, the problem here is the word Atenosols, Atenosols is mentioned not only when they got out of Canyon de Chez area going north, they say the rock over there are tennis salts. Here they say uh, a tennis salt, uh, Sage Canyon. Well, Sage Ridge, a tennis salt, if anybody knows the definition of that, it would be great. It kind of explains, I think, a rock formation. Is there anything you kind of get from that? But this, this is taken in the morning but you can see how red that rock is, that cap, that top layer of rock. That's, that is again about 12 miles. They had to get out of the Wawi Creek, it's just west of uh, Big Water, get up on towards I, uh, 89 Highway and gone just past, this is in the vicinity of Buck Tank or the Wash. This is where they met a group, a band of Paiute Indians. Uh, they mentioned that in the diary. They met a, group, uh, a, a band of Paiuchis Pirates. They're timid and docile people, no problems. Well, again, Armijo's diary, diary was, was described by Hafen as aggravatingly brief. It's worse than that. I mean, the information, you wonder, this guy's a 25 year old man uh, assigned to find a route to California, but apparently not told that he should keep a diary and how he got there. Uh, so we don't have a lot to work with, but it's kind of fun to speculate, as Paul will argue. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so anyway, I believe this is what is called Red Ridge. And again, the time frame, the, the mileage fits that argument, in my estimation. Uh, this is just a little uh, filler. This is looking off to the to the uh, southwest from close to the highway there. This is uh, this is where the wave is. The wave is in this formation up here. Uh, this is all looking, you know, telephoto lens over that way, and the light just happened to be hitting that wave area uh, to the southwest of the highway, and this is all that red rock behind it. Uh, 
um, that area there. Okay, so we're looking, we're looking down, we're coming back uh, west from that uh, the ridge there. Uh, and this is the highway, of course. Uh, this area here is what uh, Paul believes, I think he still believes that way, although after we finish here, I don't think he will anymore. Uh, I'm not going home, am I? <laughs> uh, he believes that's the Red Ridge. But this is a very short distance from the Korea River itself. So you, anybody that's been on this highway knows what I'm talking about here. You go down through the Coxcomb, you come across this, the ridge is on the north side, the left side if you're coming toward, towards Page, and then you're coming up here, and uh, there you have it. Over here is the area of the Coxcomb. We'll get to that. Okay, so we're coming down just past that last photo there. Again, the highway. Right here is the Korea River, that little green uh, green thing. Can you, can you guys see what I'm talking about? Okay. Um, that's Johnson Store Butte. This is the, the Cox going back here. The highway would be off in this direction if you get down here, which we'll see. Um, that's Buckskin Mountain in the back there. Um, and to the river from the Sierra, the, the ridge of the Red Ridge, to the river is again another 12, 13 miles. Okay, I stop here because this is an introduction. There's no question that our Mijo came from the crossing of the Fathers to the Perea river, river at that location, basically where the highway crosses. You know, on the river there. So I'm saying this is the existing Old Spanish Trail route. This is what's on the maps now. This is what's designated on the, on the maps, which apparently, according to what Paul told me, what I could read, what I could gather from the Park Service, this was a GIS. This is what the route that they decided was the right way to go, which is up to the box. So I call it the existing Old Spanish National Historic Trail route from. Korea River. I'm following none of my notes, by the way. <laughs> I'm just, I don't even know what's on here. <laughs> dates, dates are off. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I'm calling this set. So we're going to go from here. Uh, another aerial view. Uh, this is the Coxcomb. This is to the west. This is the Korea River. Uh, the crossing of the river with the highway would be down in this area here, okay? And this is going up north towards the box area. This is another view of that river. You can see how tortuous it is, how twisty and windy. Now from where they likely crossed or it's camped at the river, the Korea River, uh, this is, this is going to be at least 10 miles up to the Perea box from there, 10 miles. And remember, they only had that, that, that one day to go from the Perea River to the top of the tree covered ridge, as Steve mentioned. So they gotta, if they're gonna go this way, they're gonna, okay, I'm sorry. So if they're, they're gonna go this way, they're gonna go, you know, roughly like that, again, as Steve mentioned, sand, possibly quicksand, water. These mules are carrying 250 to 400 pounds of woolen goods to go to California with. Uh, they're traveling five to six hours a day, which is not a whole lot of time. But And, and they didn't stop. If you stop a mule, apparently, they would like to lie down, and then you couldn't get them up again. So they just ran them. They moved them along until they finish their day at whatever campsite they're going to have, hopefully with water, hopefully with feed. So, here we are. Uh, this is, again, th this is the, the east side, this is the west side, this is the Coxcomb. This is looking, this is what they call a yellow rock, which maybe some of you have climbed up, climbed up, and you know, it's a really 
cool place you can get to head off this road here, which is the uh, Coxcomb Road. But this is the Korea River here. And about right where this red spot is, you can see that red spot right there. It's the Korea River. It goes over here. It goes there. That red spot is uh, kind of a, a landmark that hikers go on. They say, we're going to go to the we're going to go to Priya Box, we're going to go up to the red, uh, you know, up there. And there's a, there's where, and this is something, there's a verse. This is where the old German, uh, what they call the old German uh, spy camp was. Yeah. Up in that, up, he, this is, I don't know, he had uh, drag all this stuff. He had uh, uh, shelter up there with, uh, you know, uh, steel, uh, what do I say, uh, uh, shack. He lived in a little, uh, Cave cut out of the rock. He had a he had a uh, radio thing up there, a radio transmitter, uh, all kinds of supplies. He was run across by some cowboys down from uh, uh, Cannondale and up that way one time. They discovered this cache there, and they figured he was this German spy because it was back in the in the forties, you know, during World War Two. Yeah, they figured he was up spying for the Germans and all things out here. And, uh, and his stuff is, you know, a lot of his, his remnants are still up there, so it's... Uh, the planes would fly over, it was a first route to get to the Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, so I don't know. I don't think anybody ever caught up with him as far as I know, but uh, the sheriff came up and he had guns and he had supplies and he had food. And how he got all that stuff up there. But anyway, the box would be right through here, Bonchetta, from the east side to the west side. Um, so, this is, as uh, Steve's photo showed, this is the entry that, from the east side going upstream through the box. Other than the quicksand, as he mentioned, there's no doubt that there would have been a problem through there with water and because it's filled with sand for forever. That's all, that's all there is up there. Um, it would have been a problem for horses. This is another view through it here. This is uh, more towards the, uh, well, their narrow part of it. And you can, you can see the uh, uh, higher, higher ground beyond that there. This is on the other side of the, of the, of the box here. This is, uh, so this is more on the east, uh, west side. In this area here is where uh, the old Priya, Priya movie set uh, was located. That Priya movie set was back, uh, I think it was originally, um, well, I'll tell you, it, it was in a movie, uh, McKenna's Gold, uh, because in that, in that canyon there, there's an artificial Anasazi ruin built. It's about six, seven feet high, and it looks like Mesa Verde ruin. And it's still, you can still find it on that north side of that canyon. And that's, that was a, for the movie McKenna's Gold. Now, um, the only outlaw Josie Wales was, was filmed there as well, when they had uh, an old movie set there. And uh, that was filmed there, and I think Sergeant's Three with uh, the Rat Pack, they had a, they had a, a series there. And um, years ago, that movie set was moved to higher ground because this was prone to flooding. Down here is more the location of the old Priya town site, uh, which was settled long ago, I think in the 1820s or whatever, maybe somebody knows exactly. Um, and that flooded out all the time. Uh, so that didn't last long there. And the citizens of Kanab were worried about uh, that Priya movie set, the location being near the river. And uh, they moved it up on concrete and, and steel girders up higher, basically where the restrooms are now. And then uh, during our Western legends about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, somebody came out and burned the whole thing down. And uh, so you know, that's the way things are. But uh, so this is another view further, further away. But what I wanted to show you here is so even if they came up this way, they had to go through this. They either had to come through a, a canyon that Paul and I and George Hardeen and 
Kendall Nieces from the Park Service rode up uh, three, four years ago, where they had to go up where the old where the road is now coming into this area. In any case, it's not necessarily easy to get out of there. And if you want to go back to basically where our kiosk is on Highway 89, um, it's six more miles. So we're talking 10 miles up, mile and a half, two miles through this here, six miles. We're talking 18 miles possibly to get where they ended up if they would have went through this next option. Um, so anyway, I wanted to show you what all that route was. Again, there's another another view of it. You can see how rugged that country is, but how how really beautiful that whole area is. Calico, uh, sure all that's just a gorgeous country. Green? Well, you know, it's by the river, and they've had rain. That was, we had more rain back then. I mean, that month. Box to get there. If it was that muddy and quicksand, you have to get through the box. How did they get through the box? Well, that's the question. Uh, as Steve mentioned, the quicksand, and definitely that's a strong possibility. You know, they may have gotten through there, but is it a practical way to go when they have another option? The other option is what I'm going to talk about next, even though I'm not following my notes. <laughs> I probably got good information in these notes. <laughs> Okay, so um, there is the existing route as it's laid out on our current maps. Okay, here we're back at the highway, just past uh, just past the river uh, to the left there. The highway goes up this way, then it cuts up through this way. You can barely see it there, and it cuts up. When you look at that area, you can sort of see, you can sort of see that, uh, this is like a monocline, that's a, but you can see a, a little like break in that, a little sideways break in that, uh, in that ridge. And uh, uh, obviously they, they notice that too, but the, the argument I have with that is, when they stopped at uh, Seiji uh, Red Ridge, back where I said they met uh, Van Pipes. They relied on, on what they could garner from Native Americans uh, all along the way. Navajo, Ute, Paiute. In this case, this, are, this is an area of the Paiutes. Uh, the Paiutes, um, they knew this area like nobody. They covered a huge amount of expanse from southern Utah to uh, northern, in northern Arizona, the whole Arizona Strip area. They were hunter-gatherers primarily. They lived in little grass, almost like wiki-ups or little huts. Didn't take them long to make a shelter. And uh, uh, they knew the routes through this coxbow because they were on the other side that was documented by uh, uh, over by Coyote Spring on the, on the east side of that. That was documented by ranchers and people that knew that there, I mean, later on in that area. Um, so they would have maybe discussed that options with our Migos group. Oh, I think we have a route through here. Or, oh, you can go 10 miles north and you can go through the, the box if you want to. Well, I'm not sure they wanted to. As Steve pointed out, I think their goal was to get from A to B as quickly as possible and as but unless, uh, well, this is the one I want to show you. Um, this, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna be over here next. Highways running up here. Uh, the next shots after that river there will be uh, on this side. Now this is the route up through here. You see this little notch here. Uh, I walk this route. Paul and I, and and uh, Travis Legler who was a BLM law enforcement officer. This was about three, four years ago, Paul, I, I think. Paul and I had horses. Travis Legler had his mule. And oh, this is this is what we, I, I'm a site steward for archeological site stewards. This is the site steward for the Armijo route through the uh, 
cat stairs area. And this is actually a orange-headed warbler. Uh, you don't see his orange head. I looked this guy up, and uh, he said we hardly ever see his little few tufts of orange on. But the giveaway is the black band here, a black band in his eyes. So that identified him as a orange-headed warbler. And so he was just sitting on a, a fence just before this uh, area here. Now, here is where, uh, and actually we took our horses up a little bit over this way, but it's the same deal. You can get up through here. This is about a, looks steeper than that, but this is about a 40, 40, 40, 40 degree angle here. And it's about 175, no more than 200 feet from the bottom down here to the top of that ridge. Is that a fence? There's a fence along that right side. So when you get halfway up there, I just wanted to uh, show this because when our Mijos group was at the Colorado River, they crossed the river, then they said that we had to repair the, the footholds of the Padres. And that one photo was a great photo that we saw earlier uh, about those actual footholds before the lake buried all that. But here, these ridges along here are natural, and they're and they're only like three feet apart, all the way up that steepest part. Easily, you could. Our, we, Paul and I had a uh, we had a guide our horses up. Legler rode his mule up to the top of that, no problem. Mules sure-footed, they could do it. Okay, this is from the top of that ridge. This is looking back east. This is that red area uh, I mentioned earlier when we first came down here. And you guys know that stretch of highway. Uh, this is from the Cox Cone that comes around. Uh, so the route would have come here over here. This is that's Johnson Store Butte way back there. So they would have come in, into here, just basically along that highway. Get to the top. Now this is uh, this is the top here. Um, this year is part of the old road. Um, that old road um, built, in, uh, Steve mentioned, in the 1950s. Um, there was a road. I want to mention one other thing about, about the Native Americans. Uh, you'll see a you'll see a spot up here, the Cat Stairs Canyon which is on the east side of the ridge. And Catsters Canyon has a wonderful rock art site in it that, that's thousand plus years old. Covers a lot of, uh, I think, multiple generations. These are ancestral Pueblos for the most part. Cantaban, most likely Cantaban, uh, yeah, maybe the Virgin uh, group of those. But they were there. They knew that area just as well as anybody after that. Um, that's you know the first indication of, of humans knowing that area. The Paiutes knew it. The Navajos knew it because they did the raiding that Steve mentioned in the 1860s. They came over and they uh, they raided Pipe Spring. They killed McIntyre and uh, oh the other fellow I can tell you. And a couple of guys there. Then they went to the Long Valley, which is up in Glendale, Orderville. They killed the berries. Uh, three people there. They raided Kanab. They shut down Kanab for a while. They had abandoned Kanab in the 1860s. They didn't reopen until 1870. Uh, so they were they were going through here. And there's mention of Woolley that uh, Steve mentioned. Uh, Edwin Woolley, when they were going after these Navajos raiding, that they heard of a site through here. It wasn't the box. It was through this cast area. So this is where um, uh, in, in, eight, in ni 1948, Calvin Johnson, Calvin Johnson was a, a rancher, an old time rancher in Kanab. Uh, he had property up uh, um, in that area. What was that? Uh, Kitchen, Canyon. Kitchen Canyon Road up there. He knew the area quite well. He took William Wellman, William Wellman was the director of the movie Westward to Women. 
Roman came up here in a, on a jeep road with uh, you know, with Calvin driving. Got him to the top from the west. Got him to the top of uh, uh, Cat uh, Coxco. Wellman looked down over what he calls Surprise Valley. There wasn't any roads on the other side. There wasn't any roads on that east side. He looked down over that, out to uh, Johnson Store Butte. Nothing out there, he said. This is where I want to film my movie. He was just blown away. He had an open area, and he filmed West with the Women, which was released in 1951. It's actually really a good movie. It shows a lot of that area and starts Rod Taylor and... Was, was it? Well, too late. I, I miss the women. I won't go into the premise of that whole thing, but actually it's pretty good. The guys like that, I think. They're about miners and they're ranchers and they didn't have any women, so this guy decided to bring women from Chicago and he needed somebody to lead him on this fabulous trip, wagon train trip. And, uh, they had a lot of trouble filming in the, in, in the Coxville area. I almost killed somebody there. Um, okay. Oh. Uh, this little fella here. If you think this presentation stinks, <laughs> step on one of those guys. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> I, I had a stroke. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're getting further. We're getting down uh, towards just past the crest of that uh, east side of that ridge. Old, old. Uh, fence there. This leads you down and you can see the highway down here. And right here is this little uh, outcrop. This is coming from, this is this is uh, Buckskin Mountain back here and you're coming down this way. And, and you, people have been to highway, there's, there's a little drive through there, a little uh, like a driveway around this rock here. We'll, we'll look at that. But anyway, it would funnel down through here Anyway, the funnel down this area here, down this way. This is the highway. This is that little turnoff around this knob. This is further down. This is down here. So there's. This is actually, actually, I think part of the old road fill right here. So they were coming down this way with the road and they wandered around. Matt Swifel, BLM archaeologist, uh, retired now. He did a whole uh, uh, survey on that whole old route. Uh, he believes it was definitely a doable route for the for Neil. So here we're getting down towards the, the road. It just kind of funnels you right down in here, right into this area here. <coughs> so you cross the you cross the highway. So this is another aerial aerial view here. Um, show you this. So you're coming down into this area, and this is that knob I was telling you about. What's that? And uh, so you come in here, and uh, this is where they would have crossed the highway area. And then they would have proceeded back along the road here. This is the this is sand wash. This is really all part of Coyote, our, our Cat Stairs Canyon here. This is not really part of the canyon so much because the canyon comes around in here. This is where the rock art, the, the ancestral Pueblo rock art is right in there. There's a little road that turns off here. You can park down here, walk along the gulch there, and see some good stuff. Well, I'd like to, I'd like to show you that. Uh, so this is getting down here, we're down across the road, we're in the wash, this is the sand wash. After they got to this point, which is probably uh, it's probably less than half the way through, I figure the, the way through there is no more than a mile and a half. That first part is no more than a half a mile, probably less than that. And then you get down into here, and this is the rest of the way, way to the House Rock Valley. And this is uh, about the middle of it here. You can see how there's no obstacle in here at all. The old road was 
was coming up over this way. It would come into there and it would come into where I showed you that room, you know, the turnoff is. This is at the end of it. So when they got there, they would have just turned the corner and then gone up basically where Highway 89 goes now. And I'm saying up by our kiosk, where if you know where that kiosk is, it was that, the old uh, Priya Town site and so on. Up to the top of that ridge, I didn't, I didn't go up photographing that. Again, this is, this is uh, the road. They cut this when they made the, uh, the new highway. They cut through that coxbow area right here. And, there, and so a highway comes up here. This is House Rock Valley Road here. That goes on to the wave. And, the, and the, the route would have been here, and then the wash goes around here, and ties in right there with to the uh, House Rock Valley Road. This is an overview here. Again, this is the highway going north. This is House Rock Valley Road. This is the, the wave area down in here. So that's all the coxbow. So it's a long, long route. You have to figure if you're coming, if you do not know anything about the Priya box as being an option, when you got to that river and you're camped there and you're going, oh, well, the pilots didn't tell us anything, what are we going to do? Are you going to think that that Priya River cuts through the coxbow anywhere, let alone 10 miles up, when, it, when this is such a formidable? Uh, landscape. Most rivers, uh, you know, you would think that that river's going to stay on that east side for, for forever, almost to its origin. And uh, uh, you're not going to figure that that river cuts through that, that rock formation, that you can get through it, even if it does, without information. So again, this is, this is, uh, uh, this, that's, would you figure it, huh? That the river's going to cut through that? Uh, I don't, I mean, if they, you were in their shoes, I don't know if you'd gamble on that. But you would gamble if you saw a possibility. Now, the other thing about that day at the river, there's at least five instances along Armijo's route that he says, we sent out recon. We did a reconnaissance. He doesn't say that they sent out anybody when they got to the river and they wondered about how to get through the cops. And usually when they did send out a recon, you would report, uh, recon came back, nothing to report. That's what, that's what he said. Not a great diarist. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that, uh, this, is the, this is the highway going, uh, going north again. This is east, Three River over here. How do you think? Huh? So um, this is a map that I think went along with uh, Matt Zweifel's report. I just want to, this is my last two slides here. Um, this is the east side. This is that red thing I pointed out when we went up. This is the area where we went up to get up on top. I think Paul and I and, and uh, Travis Legler went up one over this way when we went. Uh, but that's that red area of the fence line all along there we came up this way then you come up on top when you get up on top it's pretty flat it's pretty flat except for you know a rock out across and so on but then you're up along here this is this is basically the route along here and basically the route of the, uh, the old road this is the new highway here so the highway existing so you come back down through here and it follows you down down back to the highway. And this is that drive I was mentioning earlier. It's that driveway. So you're coming down here. And I pointed, I showed all those uh, uh, photographs earlier. Oh, I have it there. You're done. <laughs>